Nigeria's new man in charge. How will he clean up one of the most corrupt places on earth? Does he have the will to take billions in oil wealth from the pockets of the super rich and give it to the poor? Will Nigeria's new president move his country and his people forward? This is Inside Story. I'm David Foster. It's a historic day for Nigeria. The country has a new president, Umaru Yaradua. What makes the day so special is that it's the first time that power has been handed from one civilian administration to another. Can this new administration keep making history and make a difference to Nigeria? Mr. Yaradua was sworn in before big crowds in the Nigerian capital, Abuja, on Tuesday morning. He was voted in in April with the backing of around 70% of voters, but observers called the elections a charade and concerns were raised internationally. Yaradu has been described as reclusive, but he's given hints that he won't shy away from tackling Nigeria's many problems. He says he'll reform the very election process that controversially brought him to power and he wants to end the crisis in the oil-rich Niger Delta. The new president used his first speech to underline the importance of that delta. The crisis in the Niger Delta commands our urgent attention. Ending it is a matter of strategic importance to our country. I will use every resource available to me with your assistance to address this crisis in a spirit of fairness, justice and cooperation. He's also called more generally for an end to the violence that's plagued Nigeria recently. We will move quickly to ensure security of life and property and to make investments safe. In the meantime, I appeal to all aggrieved communities, groups and individuals to immediately suspend all violent activities and respect the law. And he may already have made some progress. Rebels in the Delta are saying that they're considering his request for a truce. Now let's take a look at the challenges ahead. Nigeria is a country of more than 140 million people. It's Africa's most populous nation. It also has a reputation of one of the world's most corrupt countries. The election that brought Yaradua to power was described as not credible by international monitors. Nigeria's 36 state governors wield enormous power and are virtually unaccountable for mismanagement in their states. Oil-rich Nigeria produces over $100 million worth of oil a day, and Nigeria has the lion's share of Africa's oil. However, despite these revenues, estimates suggest that two-thirds of the country lives on under a dollar a day. Millions of Nigerians also lack access to roads, electricity and health care. And then there's the violence. Clan warfare, crime gangs and ethnic violence have seen tens of thousands die in the past decade. So reforms, as promised by the new president, will have to be wide-ranging and rigorous. Our correspondent, Kale Maestri, was at the inauguration in Abuja. She joins us now via video phone. Uh, there is a challenge to the election, even though the president has been sworn in. Uh, what is the legal status of that, Kale? Well, the opposition say they will follow on with their threat to ensure that the challenge goes to court, um, and they are going to push ahead with that. But previously, this uh, kind of court challenges that we've seen have dragged on, and nobody here is really expecting any legitimate bid from the opposition to get the election results to amount to anything. It could take forever, and there will be a lack of interest on the part of the people that are actually involved. And linked to that is the people we spoke to, just ordinary Nigerians, they may support the opposition and civil society that have slammed the election results, but they've also just given up. They've accepted that there's nothing that can be done to change the election results. All that they can do now is to move forward. OK, Kelly Maestri, thanks very much indeed. Umaru Yaradua was hand-picked by President Obasanjo to be the next president, but he's a very different character from his predecessor. The 56-year-old former academic is known as a quiet and mild-mannered Muslim. He's Nigeria's first leader for 40 years to have been university educated. He comes from a political family. Both his father and brother have served in government. 
And for the past eight years, the new president's been governor of the conservative northwestern Katsina state. In that post, he's been praised for reforms in agriculture, education and town planning. He's got a clean political record, an independent Nigerian commission finding no evidence or even suspicion of corruption. The question now is whether he can achieve such economic and anti-corruption reforms in Nigeria's 35 other states. So can Mr. Yaradua succeed? Are his promises realistic? Is it all talk? We're joined by Roloke Achinola. She's a West African analyst with the Control Risks Group. And Vincent Mugombe is director of Africa Inform International. He joins us from a studio in London. Uh, Roloke Akinola, first of all, in terms of uh, security in, in Nigeria, what should the new president's priority be? I think one of uh, Yaradua's key priorities, as his mentioned, should be Niger Delta insecurity. I think one of the concerns is that if the situation in the Niger Delta persists in the long term, that could start to affect stability in other parts of the country. Uh, we know Obasanjo's strategy towards the region was to rely on military deployment and containment, and we've seen that that strategy is unsustainable. Up till now, investors in the country have been quite willing to go to Nigeria, even though they've been quite cautious in their approach to the Niger Delta. But I think in the long term, if that situation is not checked, there is the, the credible prospect of spillover into other parts of Nigeria that might, might make it actually very difficult for uh, people to work and live in. For those of our viewers who don't follow the situation closely, tell us what is happening down there and, and why it's so important for Nigeria. Well. The Niger Delta itself, the core Niger Delta supplies uh, close to 90% of federal government revenue. Nigeria is Africa's largest oil exporter. Um, in 2015, Nigeria is, is billed to be supplying around 20% of U.S. energy uh, imports. So it is quite a strategic, important region. And um, what we've seen over the years in the Niger Delta is a significant amount of neglect. There are high poverty levels, high employment rates. And what we now see manifesting in the region in terms of militant activity is also a mis mix of both a criminal element as well as a more politically <coughs> driven, low-level insurgency that is seeking to extract some concessions, key concessions from the federal government, mostly in terms of how uh, federal oil revenue is spent in the region. The Niger Delta region is one of the poorest uh, of, of regions in the entire country, but many of the region's inhabitants feel that they're not seeing the benefits and the dividends from, from the wealth that, that, that is, 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 is obvious across the region. Okay, what we'll and do is we'll, we'll, we'll come back in just a moment to examine and how that problem may well be solved, but I'd like to bring in Vincent McGombe from Inform International at this point. We talk about the, the vast wealth that comes particularly from the, the Niger Delta and how little of that gets down to the Nigerian people themselves, uh, Mr. Mugombe. Why is that? Why do they, they don't benefit from, from what's coming out of their country? I think it is um, partly because this is a, an African phenomenon um, where governments who are in power just keep stealing um, the riches of the nation. And in Nigeria, the corruption has meant that most of the money that comes from oil uh, just goes down the pockets of the, the rulers. Now, therefore, the new leader, um, Yaradua, will have a big mountain to climb. He has to try and establish credibility, first of all, of course, uh, in terms of uh, democratic rule. But at the same time, he must move very fast to make sure that the people who are disaffected because of this uh, bad governance relating to oil in the Niger Delta and so on, are rewarded. They need to have a fair share. Uh, and their leaders, for example, the leaders of all those uh, groups that have been fighting for a fair share of that oil, are in prison. One gesture he could do very, very quickly is to just say, well, look, I'm going to release all these people and then get into a real dialogue with them, call a national conference to discuss how Nigerians as a country can share the oil wealth. Let, let me just bring in two groups here. There's the Economic Financial Crimes Commission, the Independent Corrupt Practices Commission, uh, both set up under uh, the new president's predecessor. Are they just window dressing or are they tackling the, the corruption at all? I think anything that has been there so far has been window dressing. The government, uh, former government of Obasanjo, totally, and it was a catas cataclysmic failure. Uh, of governors. They just did nothing. They instead used violence to try and, and repress the people that were shouting out and saying, look, it's very simple. All we want is to share the, the riches. I think that 
Uh, we will see whether Ar Yardua can be a man of his own. And that's the biggest problem that perhaps he faces in the first few months. You know, he's operating in the shadow of General Obasanjo and many military leaders, very powerful governors, some of them who are very corrupt. Uh, will, he, will he come out and climb above all that and take very, very serious steps to try and clamp down on them? He may then find himself injuring or stepping on the toes of the same people like Obasanjo. Uh, Relaki Akinola, I mean, this is one of the dangers, isn't it? Um, a lot of people accept that the state governors are corrupt, but a lot of these people were the ones that helped to, to get uh, the new president into power. Um, is he going to bite the hand that feeds him? He's going to have to be fairly brave if he does that. I, th I think there's, there's also an important element that might be missing here is the fact that Nigeria has uh, had a southern Christian president for eight years. And I know really Nigerian politics it cannot just be simplified to one of Muslim North versus Christian South. But it's also quite important that, to realize that Yaradoy is coming from a, a long northern political tradition and that has not necessarily been willing to to sort of work in the shadow of, of, of actually the kingmaker. I think Yarada should not be underestimated. I think there's a lot he can do independent of the president. And I think he needs to establish that early on. But also Nigeria, leading Nigeria will require a very tricky geopolitical balance of interests. The North has returned to politics. The Niger Delta is calling for greater oil revenue sharing in the region. And I think Yarada will need to ensure that he approaches it cautiously. I think what this period represents is a fresh opportunity for Nigeria to move forward and leave the past behind. And I think that would be quite crucial uh, for Yarado to achieve very early on. OK, Vincent Mugombe, I know you disagree with the election result, that you believe it was, it was rigged, that this is not the man who should be in power. But given that he is in power, um, as an African, you may be prepared to accept that this is what you've got to live with. Is he the sort of person who can step out from his predecessor's shadow uh, and make a mark for himself? I think in many countries in Africa, people have been accepting such things and saying, well, that's OK. The dangers that we are f facing now looking at Nigeria uh, are reflected through the voices, some of the most prominent voices, like that of uh, Wale Shoinka, uh, the Nobel laureate, who has said that this is uh, a total failure of democracy and good governance, and that it necessitates a revolution. Now, the, the things we are starting to hear, therefore, are dangerous things. For example, people are saying, look, you know, we could have another military uh, takeover. So you can say about Yaradu and say, well, he is a man of his own. We know that in his family line, they have had very strong links with the military. His brother used to be a military man and so on. But there are very many powerful military people who are very, very corrupt and who would want uh, this lack of governance and corruption to continue. Uh, that is one thing. But there now there is another disaffected lot of military people who would want to use this vacuum of governance and democracy uh, to take over and say, well, we have a reason. We are going to organize elections. Nigeria is at a crossroads, a very dangerous crossroads. OK, and we're, and we're going to take a look at specific problems facing the country. In and when we return, we will be looking at some of the problems in more detail as we continue with Nigeria, a new president, will Africa's most populous country move forward or are more bad times ahead for its people? That's on Inside Story.